You rock, my friends. You Rock Podcast is for women like you who want to own your life and live an engaged and joyful life. Hosted by Dr. Aliyah Majid, mom of three, devoted wife, and a scientist turned life coach on a mission to empower women to take control of their lives. In this podcast, we deliver tools, insights, and inspiration on rocking your own life, owning to your highest potential, and becoming the best version of you. Now, here's your host, Dr. Aliyah Majid. Assalamualaikum and welcome back again to Europe Podcast, a podcast for ambitious women to go after the life that they want. And in this episode, I'll be sharing with you guys the six mistakes that you might be making when planning your day. If you are new here, hi, I'm Dr. Alia Majid. I'm a coach and I help professionals overcome procrastination habits and level up with courage and confidence. And today, we'll be talking about How can you manage your day better? Are you someone who juggles a ton of work-related and social activities, maybe family commitments and other things that are getting out of your hand? Micromanaging your time may be the best course of action for you. What is micromanaging time, you might ask? It means blocking your calendar with all the activities, not just your meetings and appointments that you do each day or week. It can especially help you if you have an unpredictable routine and find it difficult to schedule the same thing at the same time every day. Micromanagement of your time can also help you get a bird's eye view of your week and help you keep track of how you are using your time. As useful as this tool is, it can sometimes set you back. If you are doing calendar blocking incorrectly or inefficiently, you can become overwhelmed, thus defeating its entire purpose. So I'm here to take you through six mistakes that you may be making while planning your day. Mistake number one, you're not making calendar blocking a part of your routine. So if you only calendar block one week and then forget about the next week, It won't do you much good. Making it a part of your daily routine will help you to stay on track with everything that you need to accomplish on a daily, weekly and monthly basis. Therefore, schedule some time at the start of your day or at the end of the previous day to add tasks to your calendar. It is also a good idea to keep the calendar tab open on your laptop for easy reference when you are doing your work throughout the day. The second mistake is that you don't add everything to your calendar. You can think of your calendar as your budget for your time. So no task is too small unless it is something that you ingrain in your routine. While you probably don't need to add brush your teeth to your calendar or you know, drinking coffee, making breakfast or maybe tidying up your bed when you wake up from sleep, You might need to add buying toothpaste when you need it or, you know, cookie patch of healthy food for your family get together this weekend. Things like that, you know, so things that is out of your normal daily routine. Remember that tasks that may take only a few minutes to complete can add up to more time if not scheduled on your calendar. For example, let's say that you have five tasks that will take you six minutes each to complete. If not scheduled, you will have to carve out an additional 30 minutes in your day to complete them. And this can be stressful. Some tasks may not be time-bounded like household chores or paying bills. They may be done at any point during the day. If you are using the Google Calendar, you can add this as all-day tasks, meaning that you can do it any day, any time, during the day. Doing this pushes the task to the top of the day instead of occupying your time slots. But if you are using a paper planner, add these tasks either to the extreme top or bottom of your day so that they are out of your way while still being on your mind. If you haven't been using online calendar software, I really recommend you guys to start using it because The physical planner that you have, maybe you bought it like a fancy new one, beautiful cover that you found at some kind of unique bookstore that you 
went to early this year, you probably not using them efficiently if you didn't bring your planner anywhere you you go. If you don't have it with you throughout the day, you are not using it the way that you are supposed to. Therefore, that's why I really recommend people and also my clients and I have been transitioning to making this time blocking and calendar blocking using online Google Calendar because, let's face it, you have your handphone everywhere and wherever you are going throughout the day, right? So if you haven't started using that tool, start to use them right away. Next, we think about the mistakes. Number three is that you are not being detailed enough as to what is the task and not treating it as a to-do list. So what this means is that say that you are blocking uh, your time, maybe from 9 to 11 this morning, you are saying that you want to prepare for a presentation that you will be doing. Maybe you have this meeting next week that you have to prepare too. So you block two hours of your day to schedule preparing for that meeting. So that is still not detailed enough. I'm saying it by detail enough and really making clear of what the task is, is that what does this preparing for the presentation really means? So what are the tasks that involves in preparing the preparation for the presentation? Say that you maybe need to gather all the reports from your team or maybe you need to research uh, some current trends that are, you know, attending out there to present to your supervisor or things like that. So list down all the tasks that needs to be happen during the time that you have blocked. This ensures that whatever you need to get done, you will be getting it done during that block of time. When you are really clear about what you are you are going to do during that time, you will have a sense of, you know, peace and you might feel more calmer because you know all of these uh, smaller, smaller tasks will get done by you during the allocated time that you have, you know, put it in your calendar, okay? The next mistake will be mistake number four, which is that you are overdoing it with using too many colors if you are using the Google Calendar or if you are using your planner book, maybe you're overdoing it with all the washi tips and things like that. I'm not totally saying that it is a waste of time or money. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, I also have the period in my life that I use washi tapes and colored pens to, to give me sort of motivation to actually using my planner. You know, so when I have this, you know, that maybe an event that I'm really looking forward. So I put some stickers and things like that so that I'm really excited for that event and making sure that whatever things that I have to get done, I get it all, all done before that event arrives so that I will make sure that I'm not turning up for the event just because some, some work that I didn't get done. So I think it is a good tool too, meaning that uh, if you design your personal planner, making it more beautiful for you in order for you to get more motivated to use it. But what I'm saying right here is that, is that you are overdoing it with too many colors if you are using your Google Calendar and thinking that every category needs to have th their own colors. So I right now, I think I just have like three card that I pick for dividing the categories, uh, which is my work and then my family and then recharge. So what this means is that for work, I put it red. Priority work, I put it red so that I, when I look at my calendar, I know that, okay, that's the time that I want to really focus on working. Then if I have any appointment with my Kids, okay. What what I mean, appointment is that if I have, I have like maybe say to them that I want to take them to watch movie, or maybe I want to bring them out for lunch or things like that. So I make it a priority in my calendar too. So I block that time so that I know that by that particular day, that particular time, I'm going to think that I have been planning to do and that I have 
you know, make, make a promise with the people that I really uh, love, you know. So that's a really important thing to understand that you own your times, meaning that if you are not being really detailed with how you are budgeting your time, you might not find this time to make it possible to do the things that are really valuable for you, such as like spending with your family or maybe treating yourself to a massage, going to the spa maybe once a month and things like that. So yeah, the third category that I'm using is recharge time. So I put it in a color light purple. So when I look at my calendar, I know that, yeah, this is the section. This is a time that I'm going to recharge, maybe going to the gym or I have appointment with a spa or maybe I just want to go shopping alone or maybe I want to go to the cafe and read a book and things like that. So I block that time and I really prioritize that too, meaning that it's important for me to recharge. I cannot perform from an empty cup, you know. So if you really think about it that way, you will make your self-care a priority too, okay. So if you are pushing it become the least priority of your things to do, each month, you are going to constantly working from a deplete cup, you know, a cup with no water at all. You know, maybe you are, you have been draining out all the available water that is available from your cup. So think about it like, like that. When you are maybe stressing out, burning out, and you angry all the time, it is, it might be a sign that you need recharging. So think about one way that you can do one of the one action that you can do today so that you can recharge yourself and gain that energy back because you need to rock your world, right? So make sure that you put this self-care into your calendar blocking system, okay? Let's get back to the mistakes and then this is mistake number six, okay? Mistake number six is you aren't first flexible with your calendar blocking okay although i mentioned just now that you should be detailed you should be adding everything in your calendar it is also important to know that you can also be flexible okay so sometimes things turn up maybe somebody wants to meet with you and it is urgent so that you have to push away some other things that is having a lesser priority aside so that you can make time for this important thing. You know, you can be flexible and drag the things that is might be at the lower scale of your priority to the other day, to the next day. So be flexible in your approach. I am learning to become more and more flexible these days because, you know, when you have three kids and when in this challenging time, you cannot really predict what tomorrow will be, right? And what this means is that in this new normal, sometimes, you know, people get sick tomorrow or maybe the kids nursery suddenly have, you know, closed and for whatever reason, or you just get sick and things like that. And this is unavoidable, right? So be fl- flexible in your approach. Reschedule if you really need to. And reprioritize your to-do list. So that's why I'm always recommending my clients to put aside a time for you to make weekly planning. So that you can review back your week and reflect on what are the priorities that you must work on for the next week in order for you to move closer to whatever goal that you have for the month and for the year. I think that's all for today. So as usual, is if you are ready, you can book a call with me, 30 minutes discovery call, so that I can help you with whatever challenges that you have right now and can come up with an action plan for you to move forward in order for you to really strategize. and be motivated on achieving the most important goal that you have this year. Please take your time and click the button below, call with me. It's just a risk-free call, meaning that you are not obliged to buy anything for me. You just have to talk with me 
and I'll help you to sort things out so that, you know, moving forward with whatever things that you want to do in your life. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or DM me in my Instagram, which is at alia.majid. You can DM me there. I'm really happy to help you. And also, please check out the link in the podcast notes below, which is a link to download Productivity Planner, which can help you to also sort the tasks that you have and making clear of what are the priorities that you need to do right now really quick. And if you have any question on how to do it, I also can help you maybe during the 30-minute discovery call. So book a call with me from the link below. That's all for today's podcast. Remember, start your day with an intention. Love what you do and your day with gratitude. I'll see you next week. Assalamualaikum. Are you struggling to find time for yourself or for things that matters to you? Or if you even ever find some time, you found that you can't simply slow down and stop thinking about work. If you are one of those women, you'll benefit from the Success Accelerator Program, my 12 weeks one-on-one success and productivity coaching program that helps you to do less and get more work done so that you can spend more time doing things you love. Book a free call with me at dralihamajid.com slash coaching or you can do a self-assessment using my free live audit workbook at dralihamajid.com slash live audit. Or you can even join my Facebook group from the link below. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum.